I've actually been playing around with uh, Marvelous Designer 10. I've pretty much been trying every feature in there. So I've pretty much gone through like all, all of the features there. These are essentially all of the new features um, that they have added. But I just want to give you guys a bit of my thoughts as to what is good and what is a bit less good in there. A lot of the features that they have added are meant for people who perhaps use only Marvelous Designer and nothing else, and then maybe throw their garments into something else, either to render or into an engine afterward, but don't necessarily go through other software. So, because they've added these features to like do some baking, they've added substance integration so that you guys can import substance materials onto your garments directly, and then you can bake them out into individual textures afterward. And for me, the only reason why you would really consider doing something like that is if you're not thinking of throwing your garment into Substance Painter or Substance Designer after the fact. And, you know, for the most part, people who do character art for video games, uh, you know, uh, Marvel's Designer is really just one stepping stone to creating a garment. So I feel as if those features that they have added are, necess are not necessarily uh, tailored towards us. They have added this option here called Dynamic Wrinkle Brush. Uh, let me just give you guys a, a, a very, very quick demonstration of what it does here. You can actually go in here and go towards something that is called the Sculpting Pane, which will allow you guys to do some, some sculpting on top of your garment there um, using all these brushes. So there's not necessarily all that many brushes. Uh, I don't consider that Sculpting in Mars Designer is going to replace uh, retouching your folds inside of ZBrush anytime soon. I don't necessarily think it's going to replace that, but they have added essentially in this version, uh, these two options right here. So one is this wrinkled brush and this other one is this release brush. So what the wrinkled brush does, it pretty much just pulls on your garment. Let me take a, a, a smaller brush size right here. Uh, ooh, did this crash? Ooh, it literally just crashed. Well, this is a new version of uh, Marvel's Designer, so. There you go, I suppose there's still some instability there that needs to be figured out. Well, I guess I'll just uh, come out and say it. I'm not a big fan of the sculpting options that is in Marvel's Designer. Even if we're not using, let's say, these new tools that they have added there, but if we do use the older tools, so let's say the sculpting. So maybe I'd like to just go in here and, and sculpt a few more folds. These sculpting brushes are really only good if you're mostly done during your doing your simulation. Uh, since the moment that you go back to your simulation tab and you're like, all right, so perhaps I want to have a few more folds in here. So I've gone ahead and I've sculpted a few folds in there. Well, the moment that you re-simulate your garment for a reason, uh, the moment that you press spacebar, well, there you go. You've fortunately lost all of your sculpted folds. Uh, therefore, for me, sculpting inside of Marvel's Designer is really only useful where you will uh, send this, or rather, perhaps you will bake this garment out somehow, but you won't be sending this garment back into ZBrush for any reason. And therefore, you would like to have some sculpting options. In that case, if you don't have access to ZBrush, but you do want to sculpt some sort of detailed folds uh, as a last uh, step in your garment creation process, then I suppose that those tools are there for you. But the moment that you do use ZBrush, for anything, you'll usually find that ZBrush simply will give you a much better sculpting experience, of course. So that's why I have a bit of an issue with the sculpting brushes in general. Um, and I still, I still kind of struggle to find where I can use these things in a way that really takes advantage of, of, of them and, and really kind of makes sense in a character art pipeline that is mostly ZBrush centric there. I haven't full, figured that out yet. And so that tells me that these features are probably not really meant for us and that they're meant for people who don't go back to ZBrush. Anyway, so those two brushes that they have added, so the wrinkle brush and the release brush, I do prefer th those brushes because they're a bit nicer to kind of add these kind of little pinches on the surface and what have you there. So they do add some good visual folds. You can make some pretty nice results with those. The release brush simply kind of, in a way, more or less just smooths out or releases the folds or the wrinkles that you have added there. But as I said, the problem for me is always the moment that you go back in simulation, there's a high degree, there's a high likelihood that you will lose the work that you have done there. Auto fit. So I want to show you guys how to use this feature. We start with this, essentially. We need the garment that we want to transfer on a different uh, base uh, body, of course. And then what we want to be doing is we want to be opening that new avatar. 
you take the new avatar that you want to transfer the garment to. And then you simply turn this on here. So this little icon here that says create fitting suit. We have this dialog box that opens. So to create this fitting suit. And this is actually very, very simple to follow. Uh, this is kind of like a wizard of like, a, sort of like a create your fitting suit kind of uh, wizard. Pretty much the only thing that you have to do is just zoom in in here and start to place all these little um, cut around the different uh, body sections that is written down here. So first we start with the upper neck itself. So let's go ahead and do that. And here we go. So you need to click three times. Uh, symmetry is on by default, so that's great. Second one then, as you guys can see, is the lower neck. And as you go through these, it pretty much automatically just um, selects the next one in the list there. So you pretty much just have a few clicks to do. It's really, really quick to get this set up here. And as you guys can see, it's creating it symmetrically. You have to be using the left side of the screen, uh, which is the right side of the model, but the left side of the screen. So you have to create everything on the left side if you are using symmetry. And then you have to do here, you have to click on apply. And then what it's going to do, it's going to give you this uh, nice little fetishy suit, I suppose. And then what you have to do, you have to save. And this will allow you to save out the avatar that you presently have in your scene. So you can save it out somewhere. Uh, I'm not going to resave it because I have already saved this previously, but it will allow you to save an avatar that you can afterward reuse uh, across different characters uh, or across uh, to adjust different garments in the future. So you really only need to do this once pretty much. Then with my avatar that's been processed, um, if you will, let's go here, let's go to open, uh, or rather let me go to add. So I will add a project right here. So file, add project. And I'm pretty much going to select the uh, ZPR, uh, ZPRJ file right here, which I always read as a Z project file. I'm like, ooh, that's a ZBrush file uh, for some reason. I'm gonna go ahead and open this. And in here, I will simply select the add option and I will only add the garment. Uh, so we don't wanna add the avatar itself because that was the previous one, of course. Let me just click OK. And here we go. So this is the pair of pants, as you guys can see, that was uh, fitted for the male avatar that I had. Uh, now I can pretty much, after importing the garment itself, pretty much just click on this little icon right here that says auto fitting. And it's pretty much the only thing you have to do. Uh, it's going to take care of pretty much everything else after the fact. And there you go. So it works really, really well, um, as you guys can see. And what happens here, so if I do control Z and control Y again, you guys can see that it does indeed actually change the shape of the panels. It's not just like sort of refitting it as in giving these pants to someone else, but it's actually uh, changing all the dimensions of your pattern so that it will fit on the new avatar there. I think this is actually pretty big as a feature. I think this is actually pretty huge because I think that this allows you to do things like essentially take any model, take any garment that's been made for a different base body and then reuse it on a on yet another base body. I think it's a great feature. I think it's a badly, it, it was a badly needed feature. Marvelous Designer badly needed a feature like that. So I'm really, really glad to see it added. It's the only major thing that I would tell you guys in Marvelous Designer 10 is like a really, really big game changer in terms of features. I think everything else that they have added is a nice to have, but isn't necessarily essential. But I think that this, you know, the moment that you guys are in a situation that you have to fit a garment to a different avatar for some reason, and if you're in a production environment, you deal a lot of garments on a day-to-day -day basis, I think that this is actually pretty big. I have also seen some issues with it. It's not perfect, but it does work really well, as you guys can see, but it's not necessarily bug-free. I have seen cases, I'm gonna show you guys a different, uh, a different scene here. If you have something that is very tight-fitting, there is a chance that the auto-fit will not necessarily do it the best of jobs. Um, uh, if you guys take a look at the sleeves here, so the, the sleeves aren't necessarily extremely tight, uh, but they are certainly tight, but they're not necessarily extremely tight. And 
we'll just run this test again with these sleeves uh, because last time I had some issues with this. So I'll just let you guys see what happens here. Create a new scene, delete this avatar and import a different avatar that is actually very, very similar in terms of body shape. Right, so as you guys can see, the difference isn't necessarily all that big. Uh, it's mostly just a question of moving the garment down, I suppose. Um, and also, if I do move it down already, you guys can see that some proportions aren't quite the same. So let's do a test again, right? So this should be pretty simple. I mean, these are very, very small changes. Let's, let's run this again. And here we go. This is the problem that I had last time. Yeah, so, huh. And I've had issues like that with other garments too. Like I've tried a pair of pants too, where the same kind of thing happened, where the pair of pants were very, very tight around the leg. Uh, this also happened. So I think there's definitely still a few bugs that they need to, to fix there. Um, and I was also thinking, I'm like, well, is it because somehow it's interpenetrating here for some reason? But of course, I mean, that's what the auto fit tool should be doing. It should be allowing you to fix things, things like these. But even if I move this down like this, I don't think that, that this is actually going to change anything. It doesn't. So yeah, that's unfortunate. So it won't work in all cases, but it does work in a lot of cases and it does, it's a very, very nice shortcut to use in a lot of cases. Now, if you do have a fitting issue with your garment somewhere, you know, if a garment is simply too tight somewhere for the body to be able to move in the garment properly, uh, this won't necessarily fit, uh, or rather this, this isn't necessarily a way to fix that. There may be a way to fix tightness issues with this by being very, very creative with this. Um, it, it is a brand new feature. I'm quite interested to play around with it a lot more and, and to try and see like all the creative ways that this can actually be used uh, to change the fitting of a garment. But for me, this is more a tool to change, to adapt the garment to a different body type than it is a tool to necessarily adjust fitting issues that you could have with a particular garment. If you're on version eight, I think it's definitely worth to upgrade even to version 10. Uh, I think you are enough features behind that you will be paying the price uh, in terms of productivity if you're, if you're not upgrading. So from eight to 10, I, I think it's definitely worth it. From nine to 10, that's, that's, that's the one that I'm like, yeah, I'm not necessarily sure, you know? Like, um, I think all of that really revolves around that auto fitting feature. So if you find that you could have a use for that auto fit feature that they have added in version 10, then I believe that then the upgrade from nine to 10, I think is worth it. If you guys don't find the auto fit feature interesting, or you can't really, uh, use that in, in your context, because maybe you're just working on one character at a time. Maybe you're not necessarily reusing garments between different characters. Uh, then I'm not necessarily sure that right now it's all that worth it to upgrade from Marvel's Designer 9 to Marvel's Designer 10. Uh, that, that, that pretty much sums up uh, my thoughts there. I mean, there are good features, though, inside of Marvel's Designer 10. It's just that uh, whether it's worth you upgrade or not, uh, not necessarily convinced that it's necessarily absolutely worth you upgrade, especially if you guys are uh, tight as far as cash is concerned.